It's been a long time since we've been back in cinemas properly like this, and I cannot think of a better film for us to all come together and enjoy. It's also a great coincidence that not only is it London Film Festival, but October, of course, in the UK, is Black History Month. Can I hear some noise for Black History Month? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And this is a film that celebrates blackness throughout. All of the characters in the film are based on African-American cowboys that really existed, but we often don't get to hear their stories. And they're brought to life so vividly by this incredible all-black ensemble cast. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I'll bring them out in a minute, I promise. The soundtrack also highlights black music from across the world, and trust me, it is going to sound amazing in this space. The film also has two very wonderful black producers and, of course, an incredible director in James Samuel. I know that when this... Yeah, get, make some noise for James. And I know that when this film finishes, you're going to be as surprised as me that this is his debut feature film. It really is an astounding piece of work. So all of that to say, The Harder They Fall really is black excellence all round. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming to the stage the writer and director of The Harder They Fall, James Samuel. How are you feeling, James? It's interesting because I spent so many years sneaking into screenings at the London Film Festival. <laughs> I didn't want to break, break tradition. I ain't even got a ticket. I snuck in. Like. <laughs> so I'm waiting for someone to kick me out, but... Right, there are security in the wings. If you just uh, dodge them, I think you'll be all right. Um, James, do you want to bring on some of the people that helped you with this film? Absolutely. Without further ado, allow me to welcome to the stage my producer extraordinaire, a legend in his own right, a guy by the name of James Lasseter. The, film. the next person oh. I'm about to welcome to the stage is a man that needs no introduction. You may know him simply by, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> others may know him by, it's the rock. A man, producer, artist, <laughs> Sean Jay Z Carter. In the building. Ooh, 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 ooh. The God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, y'all? Next, I'm going to call to the stage uh, my right hand man when we're in the trenches together from shooting to post production. My editor. I love this guy. I'm a huge fan of him. All the way from New Zealand and all over the world. Tom Eagles. Now, the next person I'm gonna bring to the stage, I'm gonna do this real quick. Next person I'm, I'm gonna bring to the stage, I need you, you guys to join, join in with me to say something, right? After three, you have to say, Kalmazate, right? Kalmazate is Romanian for calm down. Because this guy is one excitable human being. My cinematographer, I'll call him in a minute. But Kalmazate after three. One, two, three, Kalmazate! Hey. Mihai Melamara Jr. The next person I'm going to bring to the stage is a person I'm a huge fan of. You guys may, have, may know him as a comedian, but you're going to know him as something else after tonight. A guy by the name of Dion Cole. A warm hand. <laughs> the, next person, the, next, the next person I'm bringing to the stage if you don't know him now, you're gonna know him after this movie. He plays a character called Jim, called Jim Beckwith. This man is amazing, and the work he put into this role, I'm so proud of him. RJ Kyler. <laughs> the next person I'm calling on, a person I'm a huge fan of, 
I'm a huge fan of all of these guys. Eddie Gathegi, where you at? Where you at? And allow me uh, to, to introduce, and I need you guys to give a big warm welcome to London's very own, Hackney's own, Luther himself, Idris Elba. Where you at? Yeah. East London was good. Where's my mum? Hi, mum. I love you. The next person I was saying today, like we met on FaceTime, I had 10 minutes to, I had 10 minutes to make the, the 10 seconds to make the biggest impression. And apparently I did because she joined the movie and she killed it. One, I, what, like just I, one of my favorite actors of all time, the black queen, <laughs> Regina King. What's up, London? Yeah. The last person I'm calling to the stage is our hero, my right-hand man, person that was with me in the trenches and then the pandemic came. Remember when the album came out, COVID-19, and the whole world was scared of it. And this guy was like, you ain't leaving New Mexico. You're staying in New Mexico, James, but I have to get back home to London. You're staying in New Mexico. And he's the lead of our film, Mr. Jonathan Majors. <laughs> It is just, I mean, you heard the audience reaction. It is so amazing that you're all here. Before we get started, I just have a couple of questions. James, Westerns, where did you first fall in love with Westerns, and in particular, African-American cowboys? Uh, ever since I was a kid, I saw, you know, Westerns were always on in the background, like Bonanza, the TV shows, and I just loved them since I was, since I was a child. They were just this amazing, uh, amazing genre. And they were always my favorite genre in, in film. You know, over here, they show a, a wide array of everything on just regular TV. They're always my favorite genre, but I think the scope and the vantage point that Hollywood would always show us the Westerns um, from was so narrow. I loved the films like Shane and The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, but they were always like these male-centric and some more often than not white male-centric uh, uh, movies and there was no room either side for interpretation and uh, and you know just growing up I would go to the library and read about all of these amazing men and women of color of the old west that didn't have a voice in in Hollywood movies you know women in westerns of all colors they were always subservient and then you read about Stagecoach Mary, Trudy Smith, Dolly Mickey, all these amazing people and all these other cowboys Nat Love, uh, Rufus Buck, Cherokee Bill, Jim Beckwith and I just wanted to assemble them all in one place and one time, like the Avengers in one kind of fictional tale and swag out. So when you watch it, it's like Rah! Absolutely love it. And Jonathan, in your work, you've done a very similar thing to James in that you choose a lot of roles that really sheds a light on black stories that we don't often get to hear. What is it that leads you to those roles? I think it's just the Lord that brings them to me. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I, I appreciate the question, and I, I think you're right in a way. Um, and I think I feel responsible for the, for the roles. I mean, I'm a black man. <laughs> I'm very proud to be one. Um, and the stories of our people um, are a metaphor. You know, I think we just, I'm just, we're just beginning. I, I'm just an advocate for my experience. Um, of the black experience, the African diaspora, but it's, if I'm doing it, well then we can have the Asian population do it, we can have the Mexican population do it, and ultimately is to keep the entire quilt of humanity and to make the entire quilt of humanity full. That's a really beautiful answer. Regina, I heard that you were Don't not expect initially... expect something that beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that you were not initially a Western fan. What was it about this man and the character of treacherous Trudy Smith that changed your mind? Well, I mean, you guys got a glimpse of James coming out here. I mean, he can 
talk you into anything. But <laughs> beside, outside of that, I mean, he's a visionary. And one of the things that um, I want and hope this film does is it inspires people to expand their thinking. This is not a Western. This is, he's created his own genre. And that's what we should do as storytellers. We shouldn't think in boxes. So it was just that energy, that vision, that um, made me say, yeah, I'm gonna take the ride with this man, you know? And then Idris was signed on, so, <laughs> I mean, you know. know. Might have sweetened the deal a little bit. And lastly, Idris, how does it feel to have the world premiere of this film in your hometown? Yo, I'm so proud. Look, you know, James and I go back 15 years and, you know, we probably snuck into a couple of these festivals around the back a couple of times. And we never, I mean, we never thought that one day we might be here opening the festival with uh, a film that, you know, that James has, has imagined and brought to life. So, look, London, you know me, man. I love my town, but it feels so good to bring this movie, which I believe is a revolutionary movie. It's very hard to redefine a genre, and James Daniel done it. And here we are opening this movie in my town, in our town. It feels so fucking good. Excuse my language. I'm so happy. Well, once again, thank you all so much for joining us. And I hope you all enjoy the film.